It's off the press this Tuesday morning. The program where we'll take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. This morning, I'll be joined remotely uh, by reputation manager Tubosun Akeje to take a look at the papers. Good morning, Tubosun. Good morning, Amaka. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us always. We will begin this morning with taking a look at different newspapers, but we shall begin with uh, the Punch newspaper. It would be displayed. So we'll take a look and know what is going on in Nigeria. Before now, I was asking you if you're excited about all the news. Well, let's go to the papers and then we'll talk about that. Uh, we have all right. the, the Punch newspaper. We'll take a look at the Punch newspaper already displayed there. And it says... Government receives, um, I can scarcely see what is there. Well, I'll move on to the next item. Market has grown as federal government cuts petrol price to 121 naira 50 cobble. That story is on page 21, I believe. Flights resume June 21st. Government orders 50% passenger reduction on page 21. Buhari hosts Obaseki, APC governors meet Oshomale National and National Working Committee on the page, the punch newspaper there. Now, CAN awaits details as federal government opens churches, mosques, and relaxes curfew. That story is on page two. And the second phase of East lockdown begins today and June 29th. And that's it on the newspaper. OK, we have down here, final year students may sit for examinations in July. And there's a picture story, I believe that's from the protest. IG deploys squad as protest rocks Benin over Univern students killing. Uh, that's Uwa's uh, uh, killing, Omozua. And then we have Tina's killing, that's Lagos, command indicts two policemen. That's on pages four and five. Nine COVID-19 patients die in Lagos on page 11. Gunmen evade all your communities and kill three on, uh, on the inside there in the newspaper. Why we are increasing borrowing, federal government justifies that. An ex oil firm engineer jailed for raping tenants' knees. What sort of story is that on pages four and five? Enemy resident doctors knock Abiodun over government strike comment. These and more inside the Punch newspaper. Let's begin now to bustle. Which one is catching your attention this morning? Before we came on. Sorry, I, yeah, I can you hear I, me? I think the first one I really want to talk about will be this issue of rape and um, yeah. molestation. Uh, it's very, very sad. And also, it has become very, very disturbing. And um, as I was, you know, speaking to a friend yesterday, I said that, you know, it's okay to train the hashtags. Um, it's very, very okay, you know, to have all the rage that we're having on social media. But it's more important for us to find a long-lasting solution to this problem. And from my perspective, the solution will be a strong process a strong punitive measure that serves as a very, very strong deterrent mm -hmm. to criminals, to people who seem to have a problem, you know. Because clearly, I don't think anybody, I don't think these criminals, I don't think, apart from being a criminal, I think there's something mentally wrong with them. You know, the mental state is not a justification, but both of them will have to be handled. Both the criminal act and the mental state has to be, because I don't understand how anybody will rape a minor. You know, I don't even understand how anybody will rape anybody. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it, beats all, it, it beats anything I can think of. So I think there has to be a process. And like I was saying, I, I feel that one of the reasons why um, we still continue to have this case in our society is because um, if, when I speak to lawyers, they tell me that rape issues are always very, very difficult to prosecute because, you know, of um, 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 the process of getting evidence. And I'm saying that maybe what we need to do now is to first, you know, go for strong legislation um, um, in, our, in our criminal justice system against rapists and ensure that the process for obtaining um, 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 evidences, you know, is very, very, very strong. Because in my head now, I'm thinking of um, 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 where, where samples, you know, collected from UA, 
you know, when she reported to the hospital, you know, were samples that can make it very, very easy for the police and, you know, the judiciary to convict this criminal minds when they are finally apprehended will there be enough evidence because at the end of the day what happens in the court of law is that you are going to have to present evidences to be able to convict and if those evidences are not there then it, it, it will be it will be very difficult or almost impossible to convict them by then if you can't convict people and you can't make them scapegoat we're going to continue to have you know this problem problem. So I think that if all the rage and everything on social media are absolutely justified, but more importantly is that we must find a way to ensure that the process that will lead, you know, um, to the prosecution of the, this criminal mind, you know, is known to everybody and everybody can almost, is like, you know, it has become our only grail to say that if you are in this particular position, you have to do one, two, three things to ensure that you preserve, you know, the evidences and issue, and that is what will get you justice. I, I think it's very important because, I mean, I have a sister and, you know, uh, and oh, clearly I have a mother and I, I, I do not even wish this, even on my enemy, not to talk of, you know, anyone that I know. So um, if there's anything that I'm advocating for, it will be that, you know, that process for collecting evidence, you know, is very strong and is known to everybody. It's a collective effort. And then we have a strengthening judicial system to help prosecute um, um, uh, criminals that are caught in this, in, in this, in this, in, in this unjust um, um, act. I couldn't agree less. It is just too disturbing to think of. It is. All right. Uh, let's proceed to... Uh, other matters. Uh, away from uh, that unfortunate uh, incident that you have highlighted there, uh, there are other matters on the punch. They've taken down the punch very fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the interest of time. Yes, I've just been notified. It's in the interest of time. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's quickly look at this day. Nigeria loses 160 billion naira to OPEC production cuts. PP, uh, PRA reduces pump price of petrol to 121 naira 50 kobo. That's on the front page there. Presidency rejects Umar's allegation against Buhari on page eight. Now Buhari relaxes restrictions on churches, mosques, banks, and hotels, but not schools. Maintains closure of schools, reopen airports of domestic uh, to domestic flights June the 21st. Tubosun, let's talk about this. Um, um, I, I still question uh, the rationale behind the opening of churches, hotels, and all of that, even at the point where our numbers, uh, even though they are not doubling, but, you know, they are really rising at um, alarming rates, you know. Um, uh, I, I really, really question the rationale behind, you know, the opening of churches and mosques and not the opening of schools. And I'm asking, where's our priority? Uh, is it possible that government is responsible or is responding rather to pressure points, you know, uh, from, from certain quarters in the country? Because um, um, if we look at Nigeria, we, we are, our mobile um, our internet penetration is not that great to say that education um, services have been properly delivered to people while at home. On the other side, religious um, services, if you allow me to use that word, has actually been more delivered to people remotely. You know, um, I know that the Ministry of Education have tried, you know, to put um, education materials on radio, on TV across the what nation, and sufficient? all of that. But but that's not enough. I mean, we've had more of churches even doing that on their own than we've had school. And then how many people have enough power or have enough internet to be able to consume something as essential as, you know, education? Mm -hmm. So I, I continue to question you, um, the rationale. I know that um, in one of the um, 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 news um, articles that I read that um, government is still working on the process of uh, reopening the school. Sounds interesting. But again, I wonder why we are not focusing and speeding up the process of opening the school, you know, and then opening the churches. And then coming back to opening the churches and the mosques, and hotels. I really think that there's a lot of risk, you know, in doing that at this point in time when it seems like we've not even started to flatten the curve. We don't even know where we're going to start to flatten the curve. We're starting to lose, um, what's it called? We're starting to lose... Um, 
um, um, um, um, um, enough bed space for um, in our isolation center. I haven't right. said that. Um, the churches and the mosques, at, at the end of the day, they are voluntary places to go to. And uh, um, it's left to, you know, individuals to make the choice to say that, you know, you can, we are really never forced to go to church or to go to mosque. And most of the religious right, most of them, if not all of it, can be performed, you know, in your own house. So um, while, I, while I would say that I don't understand that rationale, I think that people should just really think through this properly before they mm -hmm. act. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I agree with you. But you, you can be sure that you will get enough flax today, really, uh, to Boston for saying, you know, uh, the churches deliver more via social media. And so, and why are we not looking at opening school? You have a valid point. I'm not saying you don't have a valid point. But there's something about religion in this country that we all know that sometimes it looks like we go overboard. I'm not sure where we are headed, anyways. So we, we, we proceed. We will proceed. Um, yeah. On other matters, Edo APC crisis persists as Oshomale insists on direct uh, primary. And b b before we get there, there is something on um, the letter, Umar's letter. I'm not sure if you were able to see it or not, uh, but the presidency yeah. has rejected uh, um, th those allegations. I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? I think that um, it's, it's a sensitive issue, and I think the presidency should do beyond just you know rejecting the allegation. Um, First thing is we people need to be employed and appointed on you know on the basis of merit. But when you're dealing with a country as as um, 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 diverse as Nigeria, you also have to be very very sensitive so that it doesn't look like um, um, you favor one side you know of the country where you are from and to ensure that there's no nepotism in your act. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say to you that it's easier for you to employ people you know. But that's 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 what strong systems and institutions bring into because they give everybody a level playing field, you know, to say that let the best man win, you know, and I think that that's what we have to do. And again, just to say, just just to um, you know, draw a parallel be, uh, with the the issue of rape that I, I talked about earlier, that yeah. we need to find a lasting solution to problem. We need to treat you know, the cost, cost of issues and not just the symptoms. The reason why we are having this conversation today is because we have weak systems and institutions. If the system and the process that brings into office any government appointee is rigorous and, you know, very, very systematic, it will be it would be, it would be, it, would, it wouldn't be as difficult to say that, oh, this person is from this side of the country or not. It would be more like, who is the most competent to right. do the job? You know, it would not be an issue of it's from this side of the country or not. If you know that, you don't care what part of the country a doctor is from. If you're ill and you're or you're you have an emergency, you just want to be well. You know, but again, like I said, we have to be sensitive to it, and then we need to build strong processes and systems that ensure that you know um, 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 we, we are not we are not we are not under a system of nepotism. Right. Okay. Let's move to the Nation newspaper. In the interest of time, to Boston, um, we'll take a look at the matters on that newspaper right now. It would be displayed. Um, until they display that, you know, um, Tuboso, let's even take a look at what, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, we'll have to go to the paper. I wanted to ask another question, but let's take a look at the Guardian okay. newspaper. Worship us to wear masks as churches and mosques reopen. Um, that's on the front page. In the earlier paper, Khan says, Christian Association of Nigeria says it's waiting for guidelines. Well, here, here we go. The Guardian newspaper says, worship us to wear masks as churches open and uh, as well as mosques, uh, you can see people wearing masks. It's, it's almost like a way of life now, isn't it? Now, ABC not yeah. aware of Obaseki's wish for indirect primary. That's according to Oshomole. Uh, um, yeah, and then we have, again, I believe that's the... Oh, okay, that's another section of the protest. Black Lives Matters movement in Nigeria. Have you heard of that? I've never heard of it. Well, during the protest in Lagos against the killing of um, killing of people in the United States, I believe. Okay, that's now interesting to me, really. And then we have um, the figures, uh, COVID-19 figures. We are over 10,000 now in Nigeria, uh, 287 deaths and then 3,007 3, recoveries. 
Um, it is worrying uh, considering the fact that, well, um, the curfew has been relaxed and places are being opened. Government reduces the fuel price to 121.50 uh, kobo as Senate decries high oil production costs. A uh, 4.5 trillion naira budget deficit may trigger fresh recession, a minister warns. Oyo State records 10 more confirmed COVID-19 cases. Bielsa also confirms nine new COVID-19 cases and seals six religious houses. Interesting. Oh, what's your thoughts? There are so many stories here from the Guardian newspaper. Where do you want to begin? Yes. I actually, <laughs> actually have too many interests there. So maybe if you can just push one to me and I'll just take it. All right. Okay. Um, so I'll go for the um, prop price um, 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 news. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried about how in the last about two or three months, um, the, the, the NNPC and the PPRE have continuously revised the, um, um, the, the, the prices of, of, of petroleum products in Nigeria. Yeah. And I'm asking, you know, um, why, how are we going to... It's, it's, it's very tricky for... A product that is consumed by many for it for you to continue to just move you know um the, the price the up and down like that mm. um i think that if the if we're going to have a complete deregulation of the downstream sector maybe this is a good time to have it and let's just get done with it i know that we've you know fully liberalized that market as a lot of industry players have you know pushed for it um, 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 a lot of time so i think that that's what um should um, happen there uh Yeah, Tubasan, are you then still... You... Okay. Looks like yes, this... I'm with you. Uh, okay, I thought I lost you a bit. There's a bit of issue there with the network. All right. Um, okay. I believe you you wrapped up your, your thoughts there, did you? I, I lost... Yes, I did. I talked okay. about um, the fact that if we're going to have a complete deregulation of the downstream sector, then let's just have it once and for all. I don't think the constant, you know, moving of, um, of prices is, is mm -hmm. very, very um, good. I don't think it's good for the, for the industry. Mm -hmm. We're already in unsettling times, if you like, so yeah. we don't want to add more of that. All right, so what's your yeah, thoughts well, on the... Okay, go ahead, before I ask... To... I seem to be yeah, interested I, I, in the Black Lives Matter uh, group in Nigeria. That's a very strong surprising. solidarity. Is it out of place? Surprising. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, the jury is out on w w what's our concern. But for my my opinion is that we are having you know a general problem across the world. In the United States, you have rogue cops and racist cops. Yeah? In Nigeria, you have you know SARS that is constantly killing innocent people. So I'm surprised um, that um, some people are protesting uh, for that. But again, if uh, go by what um, 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 some leaders in the past have said, uh, injustice always and injustice everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and everybody has the right to protest at the end of the day. So that, that's, that's I, I would have just thought that, you know, in our own climate, we would have focused more and protested when our own, you know, brothers right here in the country, you know, have been maltreated and murdered by... Even in Lagos, cops. we have, you know, the case of Tina. <laughs> You know, yes, you know, <laughs> and I'm not sure anybody protested for that. Mm -hmm. um, it just goes to show the human nature to gravitate towards whatever is having a lot of media equity and seem to be like the in thing, mm -hmm. and then leaving behind what is very essential or important to do. All right. Okay. We'll move away from that to which other one is catching your attention. Um, it looks like um, we are almost running out of time. So, but very quickly, uh, is there something on The Guardian that you still want us to touch on? Maybe the issue of the debt, um, the debt profile in Nigeria, and I, I think that if, if more important than any time that I know in the history of this country, we need to ramp up, uh, you know, our local consumption and local production. We need to start to do things for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to reduce this debt profile, to reduce over reliance on. Uh, um, only crude oil to reduce, you know, over reliance on too many imported products. We 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 can't continue to do like that. This is the time for us and for government to develop policies that will encourage and improve, you know, local production and consumption of our own own thing. Because, um, you know, if any if the data available is anything to go by, um, we have some we are we're going to have some trouble in the near future. If, mm -hmm. 
the proper things are not done. All right, let's quickly take a look at the Nation newspaper and we'll wrap with that. Uh, it would be displayed uh, uh, for us now on the screen. Uh, budget deficit hits 4.5 trillion, says the MODG. That story is on page five. Figure up from 1.847 trillion era. Premiership return. Uh, something on sports there for you. Outrage over killing of university students. Uh, schoolmates seek justice on page four. Yeah, 11 Lagos councils Abuja Ota lead in COVID-19 cases. That's really, really frightening. And then banks in full operation, hotels back as government reopens businesses. We've talked about that. Same as, as you do know, uh, the aviation sector to begin to prep to open. Already local government in top 20 group, Lagos gets 192 in 416 new cases. That's uh, COVID-19. Obviously, we are not done with this uh, at all. And of course, we have the figures there uh, up on the screens for you. Obaseki says, my relationship with Oshomele is still frosty. On page five, APC chair, it's direct primary in Edu. Akaredolu has performed. All right, two held for killing in Oyo. Federal government to engage 774,000 youths within six months. So, Boston, should we end with just that? Yes. Um, the engagement uh, government um, is going to have with youth, you know, um, not right step. I mean, at least we can deal with that or we can manage that. But I think more has to be done, you know. Uh, media jobs and all of that, yes, it's good to have. But let's ensure that, you know, we're developing people that also can do the real, you know, the things that really, really will have you know, to, to production, uh, to the economy, and not just, you know, mm. uh, media jobs. If I'm correct, that's a 1,000 youth from each uh, uh, local government. All right, um, to Boston, I want to say thank you very much for your time with us here this morning to review the papers remotely. Hopefully, we will move from remote um, uh, review to physical review yes. when all of this is over. Yes. We are not sure yet, but yes, we hope so. <laughs> so thank you very much and do right. stay safe out there too. Thank, thank you for having me. Have all a right. good day. Great. All right, that's how we wrap it here on Off the Press this Tuesday morning. Remember, the time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa where we we'll take a look at the national dailies. I am Amaka Okoye saying be safe out there too. <laughs>